Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Tebow? Here. Mulhern? Here. Recording in progress. Karazinski? Here. Rutgers? He's not here. Hutwalker? He's not here. Kellyo? Not here. Lecklider? Here. Ward? Here. The zoning, the Swansea Zoning Board of Adjustment agenda for the meeting of November 21, 2022 is as follows. The first business is to call the call to order. The second will be a review and consideration of the minutes of October 17, 2022. Then there will be a regional impact vote, followed by public hearings. The first is the ZBA 22-014 special education, a special exception, excuse me, application. <laughs> Abby Whitney requests a special exception pursuant to Section 4, Article B2C to operate a daycare facility in her home located at 154 Westport Village Road. The subject property is shown at Tax Map 70, Lot 17, and is located in the Residence District. The second public hearing to follow is ZBA 22-015, Special Exception Application. Susanna Woods requests a special exception pursuant to Section 4, Article B.2B of the Zoning Ordinance to convert an existing single-family dwelling to a two-family dwelling. The subject property is owned by the estate of Ardell Dorothy Osborne Levin, located at 15 Prospect Street. The property is shown at Tax Map 57, Lot 83, and is located in the Residence District and there may be other business arise as required. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, minutes from October 7th. Mr. Chairman, would you seat someone for the two minutes? Yes, I'm sorry. I had that all set up to go, too. Um, we will see, tonight we will see Wayne for Bill Hutwalker and Jay for Brian Rogers. Thank you. Giving us a full board. That's great, five of us. Um, we have minutes from what well, you've been provided minutes from October 17, 2022. Present at that meeting that are present here is Ann, Adam, Wayne, myself, and Jay. Um, I'll entertain a motion on those minutes. I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes as written. If everyone's had an opportunity to review them. Thank you. A second on that? A second. Thanks, Wayne. Thanks, Ann. Um, any questions on the motion? Any questions on the minutes? Any questions or concerns before we move to a vote? Hearing, seeing none. All those in favor of the motion to approve the minutes of October 17th, 2022, please indicate so by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. The minutes are approved. Uh, regional impact vote. Uh, would. I'll make a motion that uh, neither of these uh, special exception applications uh, rise to level of regional impact. Thank you. Second. Second that. Thank you. Moved and seconded that neither one of these applications um, rise to a level of a regional impact. Uh, any questions on the motion? All those in favor, please indicate so by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. I'll get to the business, to the meat of the meeting. Um, we have a public hearing. Our first public hearing is DBA 22-014, special exception application. This is a public hearing. Abby Whitney requests a special exception. Almost that education. Special <laughs> exception pursuant to Section 4, Article B2C to operate a daycare facility in her home located at 154 Westport Village Road. Subject property is shown at tax map 70, lot 17. And as I said, we've got uh, Jay sitting for Brian and Wayne sitting for Bill. Um, what do we got, Sarah? 
from the town's perspective on this application? Um, it's very straightforward. Ms. Whitney proposes operating a child care facility in her home. She, she will care for up to three children in addition to her own two children until she's completed licensing through the state. And at that time, um, I'll have Ms. Whitney fill in the hole here, but I believe she can have up to four children in addition to her own. And the, the facility will operate from 6.15 a.m. to 4.45 p.m., intending to accommodate health care workers. Good. Um, and, and no concerns from any one of our staff along no. the way? No. Ms. Whitney? Come on up. Take a seat. Come on up. Yeah. So I think it is pretty straightforward, but why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're getting into here. Um, so just a little bit background on me. Yeah. I've been in healthcare for almost 10 years now. Um, that's part of the reason why my hours were to be a little bit earlier, um, just to help accommodate them. I know for me, if it weren't for our babysitter that we had and her opening her home for us at 6.30ish, a little earlier for us, Look, I, I don't know what I would have done. So I want to do that as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I know there's a lot of people in our area who also work at the county nursing home, which sure. is a bit of a drive. So hence the 615, so they have time, especially in the winter, to drop their child off me and still make it to work. Um, I intend on having... Um, so my rates are what I feel is a little more affordable, hence why I wanted to take four kids instead of three so I can still make ends meet but still offer an affordable amount for people because as we all know, times are hard right now. Um, but people still need daycare and I'm not trying to rob anybody of taking care of their child. Um, also, I did look into my insurance today and they are okay with me taking up to four children. If I should take any more, I am to call them and we would have to do further coverage um, for homeowners insurance um, with that. Um, I do want to be licensed, however, just because I want to get licensed doesn't necessarily mean I want to take more kids. I do have a smaller home. It's an old home, and if any of you don't know, it's one of the original homes of Westport. So there's still some work that needs to be done to the outside of it. Um, it's been a very slow process, but I am working on it and moving towards it. I have made some small things. Um, I Healthcare was hard the last couple of years. That's another reason why I wanted to get out <laughs> and be home. Um, I did go through an entire pregnancy through right in the smack dab middle of COVID. So I was like, I just kind of got to a point where I'm like, I just want to be home. I want to be home with my kids. I want to be home with other people's kids. I know it's a big need, um, and I do love children, and this is something that I wanted to do since my oldest was born. I just never felt that my home was good enough. <laughs> With it being sold and all the things that need to be done, um, I, I've made enough progress now where I feel it's safer and it's a better environment. Um, I do have a dog that She's the best dog in the world, and I know everybody probably says that about the dog, but she's really the best dog in the world. She is so good with the kids, and she just comes and goes whenever she pleases. She'll lay down. She goes to her crate when she's sick of the noise or whatever. Um, I've also done up an agreement with my parents, so that way there's little, if any, miscommunication. You know, These are my rates. These are the holidays off that I have off paid the one week of vacation paid, um, you know, during the winter, I will require you to bring winter wear for your child so we can still go outside. Um, and same thing in the summer, you know, I'll get the hose out, we can do some water play stuff, um, swimsuits, bug sprays, you know, that kind of stuff. And I have cubbies at the house so they can keep those things at the house and at the end of the season, it can go back with the parents. Um, I think, that's pretty much okay. the gist of it. <laughs> questions? I have a couple questions. Sure. Um, so it, it said in your application that you're aware of two other um, day, 
daycare yep. people, in-home daycare operating. Mm -hmm. Do you know if they are licensed by the state? I don't think so. Okay. So these are just, and, and uh, it's just a question for you, is that allowed? I mean, anybody can have kids? Um, up to a certain number. Up to a certain number. Yes. So that's... Yes, so currently what Ms. Whitney is proposing is up to three children. I think it's up to three children, right. period, that are not your own. So, so the, in addition to your own. Okay. Without licensing. Okay. So there is no mandate for licensure. Not until you hit number four. Until you, okay. And so the 534, you're not adding on. You're, this oh. is just the part that is going to be for the daycare. I'm not adding anything onto my, my okay. house, no. Okay. <laughs> no additions. Well, I, I think that was my main main question. I was just curious because it's been so long since I've needed child care. So. Mm -hmm. And I did do a little bit of research. I can have, I can have up to four kids before being licensed. So one after, if I want any more than four, I have to get licensed. Like there's no questions. Right. Did the, did, the, did, the, did the, and this question could be for you or Sarah? Did, did Mike go through the house? Did we go through the house on with that from a perspective? Of no, that's not required. Fire department um, though. That's not required until you become licensed. The, the health inspector goes through when you become licensed, but there's no town requirement for any of that. Hmm. Okay. It makes you wonder. Sure. Well, when, when we did it 20 years ago, or so, a little bit less than that, mm -hmm. the fire department came to our house, and my Jack was there. I know that both would be willing to do but it's that. Not, it's not, it's not a requirement. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Is there, are there any other licensing or other, anything that you know that you need to? open up a, a fire department inspection? Anything? Yep, so I have, so ironically one of the things that you have to have um, before getting fully licensed is your town's approval. Yeah. So I've had that hopefully after this, um, but I, the health inspector has to come out, the yeah. fire safety has to come out, um, your water has to be tested. I have three wells on my property and I did get them tested in the fall um, and based on the testing, so I had it done the place by, um, it's on Route 10. EAI? Yes, okay. I had them tested, um, and it was all within, because I was, I didn't really know clearly what tests I was looking for. I said, childcare, <laughs> and they said, yeah, we got that. So you know. it was all within the limits, um, okay. but I, for my own comfort, do keep bottled water down my house as well. Um, and I do have a wood stove, and I know that was inspected by the fire chief last year. Um, and I do have a gate, not a gate, it's actually, it's an old futon frame and it goes around my um, wood stove and it's all secured into the wall so that way nobody can get too close without me knowing about it. Right. Um, we have to get through something. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? How was the uh, drop off and pick up done? Is it, is People come into your driveway to mm -hmm. drop the kids off so that it's nothing on the street or any of that stuff. In the it really shouldn't be. I've actually specifically parked my car off to the side in my driveway, like basically in my yard. That way, when parents come in, they can utilize the driveway. Mm -hmm. Other questions? This is a public hearing, so if there is any member of the public here to speak, they're encouraged to do so. Um, I got a question, Mr. Absolutely. Yeah. From a um, exterior perspective, I know you're referring to summer, you know, and, and having the kids out and about and so forth. Is there any um, areas in the property where you could maintain some level of uh, you know fencing or perimetering from kids going to the street or being able to or is that an intention that you are looking at my house is actually pretty close to the road so i don't intend on bringing them into the front yard often um with it being winter right now and i have wood stacked on my front porch i can't comfortably stand at the front door and look out and see that my son is ready to get on the bus so we all get bundled up and we all stand in the, in the driveway and we wait for my son to get on the bus. However, in the summertime, it will be easier. I can just stand at the door and watch him. Um, but for the most part, really, I don't have any intentions. I don't let my kids play outside, out in the front yard by themselves. 
um, just because it is so close to the road. We, I have an acre of land in the backyard, like that's where all my land is, is in the back. Um, I have a couple of big swing sets out there. That's where I generally want to be. Sure. And would there be, a, I guess that maybe my question were more of, over was not where you were going to have the children. I mean, it makes more sense, it seems, in your backyard. But from a containment perspective, it might make sense to be able to, because kids, I have three children myself, and at this point, they're able to go all three different directions at the same time. And I, I'm one person, and my wife and I, we try. Uh, so it would just be something that might make some level of sense of being able to just perimeter off so something. I would I would consider and think about one for the front yard definitely the way it's hard to explain um, the way that my house sits the backyard is it kind of comes out this way and then there's the tree line on this side um, there's a neighbor here and then there's a neighbor more up this way um, I'm not I don't know if a That's fence. The we're looking at. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, right. I think if, if the state doesn't require it for a licensure, I'm not. I think you, were you thinking Adam would work make that a condition or? No, I'm just, just suggesting. I mean, right. from, a, yeah. from a safety perspective, it might be something to consider. Yeah. You know, around the playground area or something. Just yeah. you know, there's cases. Corral them a little bit. Where someone has to use the bathroom, the other kids are outside. I don't know what the age groups you're looking at. You know, so just something to consider. Yeah. yeah. Um, right now I have, so my oldest son is five, my youngest is two, I have, I'm watching a 10 month old and a four year old. Um, the four, five, and two collectively, as of now, stay together. Um, the two year old basically just follows the other <laughs> Everywhere they go, he's right behind them. <laughs> um, a fence wouldn't be bad. Mm -hmm. I would, I, I could consider that. Sure. I definitely have considered it for the front yard already. <laughs> Is there anything you, I mean, you mentioned the, the wood stove perimeter. Is there any other changes that you've had to make inside the house to kind of make things work for you? Or? I recently put down new flooring in my kitchen and bathroom downstairs. Um, upstairs is mostly new flooring. I ran out, so there's a small portion that's not done yet. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, but the upstairs has m almost been completely redone. Um, we like to joke that it was made for midgets because you couldn't go upstairs without bashing your entire upper body. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the ceilings have been raised. We took oh, out the attic and made the ceilings higher. Okay. Um, and there is a little hallway with two bedrooms and then a bathroom upstairs. Uh, instead of having like four itty bitty rooms the size of this table. Mm -hmm. um, downstairs is still the same main four rooms, a living room, bathroom, kitchen, and a dining yeah, area. You're probably not going to use the second floor as part of your child. I only use here. it for nap time. Okay. And I have baby monitors, so because my child likes to get up out of bed because we've transitioned into a toddler bed from a crib. So my child likes to get up, so I keep the baby monitor so I know when they're trying to be sneaky. Okay. Anything else here? No. Anything else? Nope. I'm also All right. Um, I guess we can move to the questions. checklist see how things work out here uh, do we do we um, concur that the proposed use is similar to one or more uses already authorized in the district and feel it is in an appropriate location for such a use I'll start with Adam um, I think there's many examples of similar businesses in the in the area um, and it seems that you know uh, 
uh, the conditions are being met, you know, for operating the, the business in its current form. And it seems that as it grows, the appropriate measures will be taken as well. So I would say yes. Okay. And you concur? Uh, yeah, I, I, I do concur. I haven't, this is the first time we've had daycare come before since I've been with the board. Okay. And I, I would say I would commend you for coming in because I hadn't given any thought. I thought it was something that people knew about and that they're, that everyone would come in, but uh, like the other two that are operating or not, they haven't come in. And I, I commend you for doing that because I think it might be important to know um, if children <coughs> or any adults, maybe elderly care, if any care is going on in any house, it might be a good idea if we knew. Right. Um, just because of potential fire or safety concerns. Well, that's the second part. Is this an appropriate location? And I don't think that's that's exactly why yeah. when it kind of yeah. gets to gets to what you're saying. That's why I appreciate you coming forward. I think that's important. So you concur that the approach yeah. is similar to? Yeah. Uh, let me see. Um, Wayne. Yes, for both the reasons at the end. Okay. And Jay. Yes, I think it's the appropriate location, and um, no matter how you. Uh, First, the first sentence, the first part of the sentence, mm -hmm. already authorized. If we remember the mm -hmm. difficulty with that. Um, either way, you parse that. This is uh, similar. Sure, and I concur as well. Um, in this district, you, 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 there's a lot of charge there that does go on, licensed or not licensed, uh, approved or unapproved or under the radar. So I agree that this is this is proposed use is similar within the home. Uh, and that is, looks like it is an appropriate location thus far. So, uh, do we concur that such approval would not reduce the value of any property within the district, nor otherwise be injurious, obnoxious, or offensive to the neighborhood? Um, and? Um, I would say, um, uh, yes, I, it would not reduce <coughs> the property value. We haven't heard any testimony to the contrary. Okay. Um, and I, I don't, I don't see where that would be an issue. Okay. Jay? Um, I agree. I don't see any of these um, potential problems having been uh, addressed by anyone, and I can't imagine any, any way this would be a problem. So I, I approve that we would not, I still would not yeah. All right. Wayne? Yes, I, I agree that it would not reduce the value of the property. The only thing that it's going to do is make it a, few, a little bit more traffic, some kids in the neighborhood, but the kids in the neighborhood is always good for a neighborhood, I think. <laughs> it can be kind of integral. Adam? I would say uh, yes, agree with everyone as well. And, you know, of course, based on the recent, um, you know, explanations of noxious, offensive, and injurious <coughs> that we were um, educated by our our, our, our local legislature. Um, I don't find that any of these, uh, this particular use does right. not meet, meet the threshold of any of those, based right. on those, those definitions. Certainly agree with that. And uh, we don't have any, any um, indication in front of us uh, that anyone is even claiming or trying to prove that this is going to reduce the value of their property with no evidence in front of us to um, make that conclusion. So I, I also agree that the approval would not reduce the value of any property within this district, nor be injurious, obnoxious, or offensive to the neighborhood. Um, do we think there'll be s nuisance or serious hazard to vehicles or pedestrians? Um, Wayne? No, I don't think so. I think, as I mentioned in the prior question, uh, there'll be vehicle traffic, but the hours, the pickup and drop-off time, shouldn't be during rush hour in Westport, I don't think. <laughs> It's all relative, right? Yeah, yeah. that's true. Um, and? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say, yes, there would be no nuisance or, or hazard. She's already taken steps to uh, get her own vehicle out of the way, so I don't, I don't think there'd be an issue. Okay. Let's see, Jay. I don't see any nuisance or serious hazard, uh, primarily because all the drop-off and pickup is going to be done in the driveway mm -hmm. and out of the, out of the general traffic flow. So. Okay, I concur. Um, 
that there'll be no nuisance or serious hazard to vehicles or pedestrians given this use within this neighborhood. Um, do we agree that adequate and appropriate facilities would be yeah. provided? Yes, Mr. Chairman, oh, I'm sorry. I want to play as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say yes. I'm sorry. Right. Try to keep kind of yeah, no robbing worries. it, you know. Not no worries. worries. Thank you. All right. Um, so we want to number four, adequate and appropriate facilities. Do we concur that adequate and appropriate facilities will be provided for the proper operation of the proposed use? Jay. Uh, yes, I do. Um, the uh, applicant has described how she will use the, use the uh, property. I would uh, advise her to pay careful attention to traveling people mm -hmm. and, and perhaps fence or, or limit their ability to explore the neighborhood. Especially as, you know, six months from now, they'll be six months older and even more. Six months quicker. But I don't see any uh, any indication that there being appropriate uh, facilities provided. Okay. Um, Adam? Uh, I'd say yes, and I agree with James that, you know, the applicant has showed that the uh, the business and the use is uh, the, the thresholds for, for operating that business and use have been met thus far. And then again, as the business grows to a larger group of kids, that you will follow the appropriate steps. And I'm sure these will be remeasured and re readdressed at that time. So, yes. Wayne? Yes. <clears throat> yes, based on the information provided. Thank you. And? Yes. Okay. I concur. Um, so, um, we've been through the questions, we've answered them all, I could say at this point we could entertain a motion. Come on in. Just giving a script there. Well, no, sorry. I just want to Okay, I'd like to make a motion that we um, accept as proposed the ZBA uh, number 22-014 special exception to operate at daycare at 154 West Fort Road. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Adam. It's been moved and seconded to approve the special exception on application 22-014. Any questions on the motion? Hearing, seeing none. Um, all those in favor of the motion, please indicate so by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Go at it. Go at you it. Know. Thank you. you Thank know. you very much. Seven children. I'm going to be moving. You can do it. Oh. There were seven kids in my family. We didn't have a fence. Nothing. Not one fence. <laughs> Except right? for that one fire, everything was good. <laughs> the kids didn't know anything to do with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Good luck. Thank you so much, guys. Thank yeah. you for your time. You're welcome. Good night. Have fun. There will be one that he had. Sure. All right. It is amazing when you have kids going just every direction. You know, think you can handle them. Oh, yeah. So, God bless the whole scenario and the desire to do it. <laughs> we, need, we need more people like that. I have no doubt she can handle it, too. She had like six of them. All right, okay. move on to our second public hearing tonight. It's ZBA uh, case number 22-015, another special exception application. We will have a public hearing. Susanna Woods requests a special exception pursuant to section four, article B2B of the zoning ordinance to convert an existing single family dwelling to a two family dwelling, subject property, properties owned by the estate of Ardell Dorothy Osborne Levin, located at 15 Prospect Street. Property shown at tax map 57, lot 83, located in the residence district. Pretty close to where we are right now. Um, Sarah. Um, yeah, sorry to give you another straightforward request <laughs> this evening, but it's very straightforward. It's an existing single family house. The, the structure itself is not being proposed to be changed from, on the exterior at all. There will be no increase in footprint. There is adequate parking on site. There's a concrete pad towards the base of the driveway that can accommodate three cars. The driveway itself is nearly 100 feet long, and there's an existing barn garage structure that could potentially store another vehicle. It's on public sewer. It has a private well. Um, 
And it's on just about three quarters of an acre, right? Right. Thank right you. over there. <laughs> yeah. Be close by. And um, Miss Woods is intending to purchase the property um, as of January one. Yeah. I believe it's a family house. It sort is. Of. Yeah. My house lived there. She bought the house in 1975. Wow. Yeah, and has lived there all this time. I guess that was a little bit more than what you, you have to have to renovate the house pretty significantly to, um, to do what you need. Not a lot, no. not a lot of renovations. Just upstairs, I'll be putting a small little kitchen, and there's already plumbing up there. That's where the washer and dryer is. So just painting and sanding down some floors. I'm not taking down any walls. Um, adding a door here and there just for privacy to separate from the other. Um, that's about it. Other questions from the <laughs> I, I have a question. Um, and I'm not really familiar with what's in, so is this going to turn it into like two, two dwell, a condo? Is that like a condo? Unit. Yes. So, so are you, are you, it's not a, Add to right, attached right. dwelling units. So we have we've been having a lot of um, zoning applications for detached um, accessory dwellings, oh. which are which are so that you can have a relative living near you on your property. Okay. And and add-ins, which are attached dwelling units, where you would have like your mother-in-law living, you know, but far enough away to so talk. I see. Yeah. Um, so you're not doing that. You're you're going to. It's all attached. Uh huh. Yeah. So the the to get between the two, you have to go outside to get into the other one. Nope. There's different um, entrances. Like there's the front door, which I'll be using for the downstairs tenant, and there's another side door. So it's a tenant thing. It's you're gonna you're you gonna live there and have a tenant, or are you just gonna. My live older there? son is going to live there. Okay. And there'll be a tenant. Yeah, I don't. I'm, I guess that's really not not any of my business. I'm no, but you understand what they're That's okay. So yeah. when you when you do that, so you don't have to. Has the, does the fire department have to like make sure that there's no if there's a fire in one side, it won't get to the other, or is that really not that's not germane? Um, well, it's when it's not. only two units, uh -huh. um, it doesn't like. It's not considered. Doesn't okay. All right. Does it need a building permit to do this? Um, if she's only putting up doors, no, but to add the kitchen, depending what's involved in that, if there are not hookups already in the house for plumbing and electrical or gas, you know, already, um, you'll need a building permit for that. Okay. I thought she, if, only if you're changing the actual outside of it? No, um, you know, to run new electricity, to run new plumbing. Um, anything that's required to, to put the other kitchen in. Oh. And bathroom, if there is another bathroom. Yeah, if you're adding another bathroom. No, I'm not no, adding. Yeah, there's already another bathroom. Yeah, there's just, already a bathroom there. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, just to clarify, are you saying that she needs a building permit when she makes those changes? Yes. Okay, I just want to add that. It's neither here nor there for our purposes, but. Right. I'm but just curious. Uh, yeah. I, I noticed there were three, at least three doors to the property. It seems to be outside doors, so it seems like. Plenty yeah. of ways to get, get in and out. Yeah, and yeah. So there's, out yeah. of the barn, there's a right. um, out the back sliding doors, there's a um, stairs there as well. And it took me a little bit of time to find the right zoning regulation, but um, on 0.73 acres, you can have 2.1 units. So, <laughs> squeak, 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 squeak. Yeah. Well, that's perfect. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's true. Thanks for reading that, James. <laughs> Remind me. Adam? I think it sounds pretty straightforward what you're trying to accomplish and understand conceptually. And it sounded like you did have the appropriate parking for both tenants. Yep. Okay. I'm just curious, one other question, Mr. Chairman. Um, mm -hmm. You know, things like snow removal and so forth and maintenance of the exterior, how do you plan on on kind of addressing those things. So I, I've already hired somebody to do that. The same person that does it for me in Keene. He, he actually lives in Swansea, so it's better. Um, so he'll manage that. And I'll be coming here like every weekend anyway, the day off is. And just over time, fix it up. So I want to paint it. 
but there's only so much I can do budget-wise to an old house that hasn't had a lot of upkeep. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm doing as much as I can on my own and with help from family and friends. Um, yeah. Did that answer your question? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I'm just thinking about one of the questions that we are tasked with answering or voting on is yep. proper facilities and management of the yep. facilities and so forth. So yeah. that falls under that. And then trash removal would be one more thing. Yep. Um, probably going to be using the same people that I have in the which is ABC, this was like or get some else. Okay. Yeah. You can recommend it on over here. There was something that I was going to talk about. Um, the, um, oh, I think I read somewhere that just next door there's a multifamily dwelling. So it's, it's similar to, it's right in, in among other multifamily. Right. That, the beehive? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. All across the street here. Yeah, there. On the other side of the like the backyard of um, our house is kind of to the side of their of house. that particular yeah, property. Yeah, like yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, very close. This is a village. But, you know, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a yeah. dense. It's dense. It tended to be a denser part of our town. Wayne, any I'm questions? all set. Yeah. Anyone else? This is a public hearing. You didn't draw the hordes to this one, so it doesn't appear to be. I don't have anyone here. But this is a public hearing. Open to the public. Have yeah, anything that I think there was a really the major there's one heating system in the house. One heating That's system? Question to you. Yeah. That'll handle both units. Yeah. Okay. And how many thermostats? <laughs> so there's yeah. What's that? I think they're talking about zone heating so that you have right. the person who's the tenant, the person who can have their own heat, their own right. temperature if they want. There's one, two. It's just something to think about. Because two. Yeah. Two. Yeah. So the person. Who I've had my um, electrician come over and yeah. just kind of say, let's go around the whole thing. Good. And you decide, you know, you tell me what I should do, what is okay, what needs to be upgraded, what. Because that would be, I mean, if you're renting to somebody and they complain to you about it not being warm enough. Exactly. Make sure they're paying for the heat. Yep. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my wife had charge of the thermostat, it would be 85, and it was yeah. me only, me in the 40s. My, my thermostat, my, <laughs> our, our heat just barely got turned on, and it's at 64. That's, yeah. that's, that's the way I am. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's hardly ever turned on. <laughs> I'm like 64, 65 too, but... Okay. I, I guess I'm just... Ten might not. I'm just curious, you have, you have electric cooking stoves? Yeah, they yeah, what, what type of cooking stoves do you So um, the downstairs has an electric stove, yeah. and upstairs is a small, there's going to be a small electric stove. Okay. Yeah. Other questions before we close the public hearing? Anything you'd like to add? I don't think so. If anything comes up, I can reach out to Yeah, okay, Cheryl, Mike. Okay, yeah, Tom's always available to help. Thank you. All right, I guess we'll close the public hearing and move into the questions. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> All right, do we agree that the proposed use is similar to one or more uses already authorized in the district and is in an appropriate location for such a use? Adam. I would say yes. It is um, both similar to one or more uses already authorized in the district um, I know we're not supposed to necessarily relate it directly only to other um, multifamily mm -hmm. situations, but there are other houses that have tenants of, of similar size and so forth and occupants of similar sizes. So from that perspective, yes. Um, and uh, is there a public location for such a use? There's nothing really changing dramatically to the footprint from any perspective, mm -hmm. it's really all interior, so the location seems to have adequate ad adequate capacity. So Good. I'd say yes. Excellent. Ann? Yes. 
Wayne? Yes. Jay? Yes, for all the reasons I would say. And I agree, this is, in, in essence, this is a residential use. Um, just a residential use of Titans 2. So I think that is definitely a use that's similar or one, similar to one or more that are authorized in the district. Second question. Um, would such approval, do, do we concur that such approval would not reduce the value of any property within the, in, within the district nor otherwise be injurious, obnoxious, or offensive to the neighborhood? And uh, yeah, it would not reduce the value of the property in the district. Um, from what I'm hearing, there's, you know, at, at, at most you're looking at one or two more cars. We're not, you know. 70 unit development, right? Like yeah, that. right. Okay. Um, and you don't think anything here would be, no. the use would be injurious, obnoxious, or offensive? Everything's being done interior at this time, so. All right. Wayne? I agree. Okay. I agree. I don't see any evidence that there would be any reduce, reduction of value or any uh, offensive or injury issues. Adam? I would say yes as well. Okay. I concur. Do we agree that there will be no nuisance or serious hazards to vehicles or pedestrians? Jay? I don't see any reason there would be. Thank you. Um, Adam? I would say yes. I think the density of the use or the, uh, the occupants of Silver could be very similar to a single family dwelling mm -hmm. with multiple people in it. So not a huge difference large family. between, you know, this use and, and say just that. So from that perspective, yes. Yeah, see that. Color tapes on living at home or something like that. Yeah. And? Uh, yeah, there would be no, no big deal. No serious hazards or nuisances? Okay. I have, I have four cars and six motorcycles, so. <laughs> Probably. Um, Wayne? I agree. No nuisance or serious hazard. Yeah, I agree. It's, again, it's the uses uh, it's residential, which is what's going on in that neighborhood. And it is a mixed neighborhood for sure. Um, this is a mixed neighborhood for sure. <laughs> we are in that neighborhood, I can think of. Um, do we concur that adequate and appropriate facilities will be provided for the proper operations of the proposed use? Uh, Wayne? I agree. The public sewer uh, being there is really the what made this happen, I think. I think you're right. Yeah. 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 Um, Jake? Yes, again, the public sewer, and then um, I don't see any, any uh, greater drain on the well that was created by this than it would be for a large family house. Yeah, possibly less. Uh, Anne? Yes. Adam? I would say yes as well. I mean, the applicant has stated that, you know, things like uh, trash removal, snow removal, and so forth are being considered and, and, uh, and addressed. I would, I would recommend the applicant utilize our code enforcement department and go through the building. It's a sure. wonderful asset. Mike Jasmine is fantastic sure. at yeah, giving advice as well. Yeah. So. He's really good. He's really good. Thank you, Sarah taught him everything. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Very educational. I, yeah, his it's name good, has come up team. many times. He's very helpful. Yeah. Great. 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 I thought he wouldn't be here tonight. Yeah, well, we've all been here. Um, I concur. Um, as as several of you have noted, we, we are in a, like a lot of New England towns, we have a lot of larger properties that were um, in village settings and beyond that were built for larger families. And we're in a, we're in a definitely a transformational time now of household size. And, um, seems to be a, appropriate use of a property that formerly housed maybe, you know, a number of children, you know, and maybe extended family at the time too, and that's when it was built in that era, and uh, I think this sort of morph of this property is appropriate given the, you know, the fact that there's a need. It's not like she's producing something that really has no need in our community. We have much smaller households, and ultimately it, it seems a, a larger demand for the housing we have, so I think this is good. And it, and this being in a village setting, I think it even makes it more appropriate. So, all right. After all that, mm -hmm. um, we can entertain a motion. Um, I'll make a motion for a CBA 22-015 special exception for 15 Prospect Street that we uh, accept this uh, uh, conversion of existing single-family dwelling to a two-family dwelling. And we have a second. So, any questions on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please indicate so by saying aye. 
No. All right. All right. Go at it. Thank you. Thank you for investing in West Swansea. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. A lot of good things happening in this part of town. I've so noticed the sidewalks, the Thank lighting. You. Yeah, it's a really. I'm excited about West. And your here. son's going to live there? He yeah, is. He's going to live in the smaller part. In the smaller part? Yeah. So, and I'll lift up the bigger part. But. Let him know that we have plenty of committees and, and groups <laughs> yeah. that he could <laughs> volunteer for. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. Ask him to join me tonight. So no, well, <laughs> it's, it's, oh, I, I know I have one. <laughs> But no, it, it's important and it's also good for his, you know, whatever career path he's on, he could learn a lot and it's something that I think would be beneficial. Would you guys, if sure. somebody applies for, to work for you and you have on their resume that, that they volunteer for in their community, I think that would be a, a bonus. I agree. Yeah, Thanks for that. Absolutely. Let him know. I will. Cool. Okay. Um, any other business? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> an early night or an earlier night than what we used to? Mm -hmm. Okay, terrific. Um, Thanks, Matt. You're welcome. Thank you. Good night. Well, I guess at this point, with nothing else to ask for, I don't know. we can entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, you got it. I'd like, to, I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn. <laughs> Somebody else needs a second. Yeah, yeah can we have a second? Yeah, someone else. Uh, I want to stay all night. I second it. Okay. Yeah, up and all in favor? <laughs> yeah, thank you. All in favor? In the case, in the case of by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I have a question before everybody leaves. Uh -huh. Just so I know what to do. At the end of my, I live on Park Street, which is between T Bird and Dunkin' Donuts in North Swansea. Okay. At, at the end of my street, it is almost impossible to take a left-hand turn out on Route 12. Yeah, I, want to, I want to make that a permanent right-hand right -hand turn, turn only. And go around. And make people go around. around, the, around the road. Now, how do I go about doing that? It's a straight road. Mm -hmm. Well, it it's, it's enters on a straight road, but the road, Park yep. Street, belongs so to the town of Swansea. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I don't, it's not a zoning issue. No, but I don't think no, no, no. But I just, I'm curious. Um, give me a call at the beginning of next week. Beginning of next week? Yeah, because okay. people who should be part of this conversation are out this week. But you were, so in my mind, yes. Just one thing. Um, when we had the plane crash, yes. um, I was trying to get to Papagallos to pick up dinner. And I couldn't go around the rotary to go up there. Right. I couldn't go up Factory Road and come back down Route 12 because it was all blocked off. Yeah, so but I did go through and up and up the <coughs> street and try to get over. And then I could, I could, I didn't. I parked the Thunderbird and walked. And but walked. I could have taken a left turn, and other other people did take a left turn and driven up to Papagallos. So all, that was only an emergency situation. Right. But it would have been helpful if, if it had been really nasty weather or whatever to be able to take a left turn and under those circumstances. I hadn't thought about that. But that's because only in an emergency yeah. situation where they closed off the roads. Right. I'm just thinking, because it, I, to me, I, I, I sit there and I watch the traffic back up into Park Street because yeah. people are trying to go into Duncan's. Yeah. And there'll be, oh my you know, God. there'll be six cars and they're, and I'm like, what are you doing? How yeah. much gas? I mean, it's 12, 12 cars deep yep. waiting to get a coffee. You get a $3 coffee. And, and I, I hear you. I think you're right. That's what we need to do. I just want to... And perhaps on that night, the police should have blocked off Park Street also. Yeah. Because nobody wanted to, no, they didn't want eight people on that road. Right. So, so it probably should have, you know, I'm, I'm just blowing smoke okay. here. But I think that's, yeah, that's the I'm only just, time I could think that I would want to take a left-hand turn there. Yeah. I'm, I'm just trying to look out. I mean, it, it's really just to keep the traffic moving. Yeah. In my mind, it's like the more, the more we can keep the traffic moving, the better off we are instead of having cars waiting for somebody who may or may not have an opportunity to take a left. Gotcha. Take a right, go around. Well, there is that situation, I'm trying to think what the street is, but where Norm's Ski Shop is and Agway, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's that sign there that states that you can only utilize a left-hand turn between these hours. I was thinking tries to oh. mitigate it, though. Mm -hmm. For you know, uh, rush hour yeah, times. Yeah. I was thinking okay. the same thing. You know, you know, two thirty in the morning, mm -hmm. taking yeah. the left there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. But I'm All sure right. there's times in the day. Five to five, worse. Five a.m. to five. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Oh, yeah. I didn't get a lot of reception from.
Or there's a stencil and some spray paint. And you yeah. can just go, I go just at it. it. Yeah, right. <laughs> fix it yourself. You can't take a left out of the school parking lot onto Route 32 over by the SAU building. Yeah. They want you to go right and around right. around the road. Yeah, oh, that's, an, that's really? precedent. Oh, that's, yeah. that's good precedent. I just got to find out if I need anyway. to get a petition to go around door to door, <laughs> oh, which will be fun because I'm so shy. Yeah. But I think the school just took it upon themselves to do that. I don't. I might have been, you know, it might have been part of planning too, because of taking, you know, taking a. Okay. Well, no, taking a left there is, you know, that was probably, no? That was part of the roundabout. It was all part of the roundabout. Yeah, yeah, it was all part of that roundabout development yeah. for sure. So there may be precedence, and you know, certainly sure. working with town managers and. And that intersection you're talking about is a whole lot busier than the one you, you're talking about coming out of the SAU. Mm, yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 That's not yeah. yeah. Hundreds of cars go by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hundreds. Lots of All coffee. Of <laughs> yeah, and that doesn't that. It seems like that facility, that that shop, closes pretty early. I mean, they're not open till midnight. Yeah, they evening, used so. to be, but they have trouble getting help. Like oh, else. that's why. Okay. Well, I'm certainly. That's a good precedent. Is the one over by the SAU building? If you haven't seen it, it's no. I'll, I'll go check that out. Yeah. All right, I'll give you Got to call take a right out of there. Thank you very much. I want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As well. Come on up. Be well. Is that a Yes. Sorry. Right. <laughs>